Welcome back. This is Patty Bennett with another Patty Stamps video tutorial. Today I am super excited about this card that I made. I made this yesterday and I thought this was so pretty. Now would you believe if I told you this background is super super easy to make? We're going to use the new Stampin' Up! Ombre pads. I'll be showing you how to use those in a couple of different ways. You can see that they have graduated color, so it says Calypso Coral, but it's five shades of Calypso Coral. And then same thing with Rich Razzleberry and Bermuda Bay. So I'm going to show you how I made this background. So you're going to need to stay tuned because I want to just show you some basics about these pads first. They are meant to just use a stamp, ink it up on the pad, and then stamp. And you can see how you get some graduated color, light to dark, on the images. So that's kind of how they are meant to be used. And let me just show you real quickly how you would do that. So let's just take this stamp and uh, let's do Rich Razzleberry. Now I'm going to have the light at the top and the dark at the bottom. Might be a little hard to see because this is so dark, but it's there. And you want to, when you stamp, kind of go around in a bit of a circle. You don't just want to go straight across because you'll get kind of stripes. You want it to blend a little bit. And then don't forget that this is a really firm pad. So you are going to need to really put some pressure on this stamp to get the ink on it. And then you may want to just huff a little bit on there and give it some extra moisture because these are different than those new firm foam pads that we are used to with Stampin' Up. So then when you stamp with it, you can see that you get a neat image that is just light to dark in that one color. So as you probably guessed while I was doing this, it's best to use a fairly large stamp. If you had something very small, you're only going to get one or two colors off of that pad. So remember that when you're stamping with these. If you want that full range of color, use a somewhat larger image that's almost the same size as the pad. Okay, so that's just your basic stamping with the ombre pads. And now let me show you how to make this background. For this background, I have used the Stampin' Up! watercolor paper. Now this comes in a package with six inch by nine inch sheets. And because I wanted this to fit on a standard size card, I cut that down to two pieces and each of these are four by five and a quarter. And the reason that I did that is because we are going to be placing this on top of it and I wanted it to match up just perfectly. I'll show you this part later, so stay tuned for that but I just wanted to show you the reasoning that I'm cutting it to four by five and a quarter so that I can layer it right onto my colored standard card. So I'm just going to use one of them and you can pick any two pads to do this technique. So my favorite actually is to use these two together, the Calypso Coral and the Rich Razzleberry. So that's how I'm going to demonstrate it, but then I'll show you how it looks when you use the other ones. You're going to take the pad, hold it, and turn it upside down, and we're doing what we call direct to paper. We're putting ink directly on the paper. And I'm going to swipe, and I've got it so that the dark portion is up here at the top, and the light portion is going through the center of the card. So you can kind of swirl or just go back and forth. You're just going to get some ink on there. And you don't need it solid. In fact, it's probably better not to make it entirely solid. And then with the Rich Razzleberry, with the light one here that's going to go into the middle and the dark one at the corner, I'm going to put some Rich Razzleberry ink on there. And that's okay that they're blending because these are beautiful when you get them blended together. And then you can just take any kind of a spritzer, the Stampin' Spritzer or a spray mist bottle. And I'm just going to spritz fairly generously 
I tried it with just a few spritzes first and it just didn't blend very well and I went back with more. So that's why I think it's better to just do it all at once and give it lots of spritzes of water. And as it dries, it's going to blend. And so here you have it once it's dry. It just takes a few minutes, especially if it's warm where you are, like it is here. And then you have these beautiful blended colors. Now here's what it looks like with the Bermuda Bay and the Rich Razzleberry. And you can see that's beautiful as well. And let's just go back to that finished card so that you can kind of get an idea of how that looks. Isn't that so pretty? And this is just the easiest background. It is like no mess. Well, I shouldn't say no mess. It's a little drippy. Just, you know, make sure you put your paper down, but it's so easy and quick and you don't have to mess around with brushes or anything else. Now when this dries, it's going to flatten out. And just a tip when you're working with watercolor paper, you can always spritz the back of it to help it flatten back out. And really you should probably do that first, but that will really help any watercolor paper to flatten out and not curl up so much. So any of these ombre pads can be purchased in the Stampin' Up! online store. And if you would like to shop through me at pattystamps.com, you can click on any of the shop online buttons and go to my store or down below in this video, I will have a link to the corresponding post so that you can find all of the information on this card. So now let me show you how we did this part to put on top of the watercolor portion. On page 194 in the current 2016 Stampin' Up! catalog, you're going to find down here in the bottom left-hand cor corner the detailed floral thinlets. And this is what they look like when you purchase them. Now I have them on the magnetic cards from Stampin' Storage. I have a separate video about that. In fact, let me link right up here to that video. If you're on your YouTube, you can click on that link and you'll be able to see that video. But this is how I like to store mine. So there will be two pieces of the three that you will use. This one is something separate. It actually cuts out that outline, but we're not doing that on this card. And what you'll want to do for this particular card is to cut your paper to four by five and a quarter. And then in the big shot, you will line up the two pieces with just the same amount of equal border all the way around. So when you line it up like that on a four by five and a quarter inch piece of cardstock and you put it in your big shot, now I would definitely recommend the new platform. That one is awesome. Let me just show you. That's on page 190 and it's just called New Big Shot Platform. That is so helpful in getting this to cut really nicely. It cuts all the way through and then with the die brush you barely have any you know, little rolling back and forth and it gets all the pieces out. But when you cut it out then you will get this piece. So now that you have this piece die cut and you have the background watercolored and done and dry, you want to make sure it's dry, you need to put the two together. My preference is the Tombow Multi-Glue. I like to use the thin side or the, the finer tip. I put it through the middle and very thinly around and then I put it into some spots where there was a little extra cardstock. And now let me give you this tip. What I found to be really helpful was I put it down with the glue side up and since we cut these to the same size I lined up a corner like that and I held it and I put it down and then I just pressed and then it glued them together so that when you pick it up you have them glued together and you don't have to try and pick up the glued piece. That worked really well for me. So that one then would look somewhat like this. Every background will turn out just a little bit different, but you can see that it's basically the same because it's the same colors. Then of course I also did it with the Bermuda Bay and the Rich Razzleberry. And so it looks gorgeous with that too, doesn't it? And don't forget you can flip it, you can try it both ways and see which one you like better. It's gonna look a little bit different with either way that you do it. And then you can pick your coordinating cardstock, so that would be beautiful on the Bermuda Bay. 
Um, gosh, let's see. It also would look really pretty on the rich raspberry. Let's see how that would be. Oh, that would be so stunning as well. So lots of options here with the three colors and blending and everything. So give that a try. Let me know how you like that. And I think that you're going to find it to be so easy and so fun. So leave me a comment if you have questions and let me help you with your order to buy the Stampin' Up! Ombre pads, the watercolor paper, or the beautiful detailed floral thinlet die. Thanks for checking in. See you next time.